Today's topic is basic population genetics for understanding human evolution. The basis of evolution is the transmission of traits with variation from one generation to the next, and the study of this process is called genetics. The definition of evolution that we will use in this class is a change in the allele frequency of a population over time. Where does the variation in populations come from? Well, individuals vary as a result of sexual reproduction, and our first genetics lecture covered why. But populations vary through time due to a number of factors we'll cover today. Let's begin with reviewing how variation in individuals is due to sexual reproduction. In all but the sex cells, genes come in pairs. Any particular gene may display variants called alleles. The ultimate source of alleles is mutation, a random change in the coding of a gene, that is, a change in the base pairs in the codon. In addition to mutation, other sources of variation in individuals may also arise during sexual reproduction. These include segregation, which is also called independent sorting, linked genes, and recombination, which results from crossing over. Let's review what is segregation. During the production of gametes, when allele pairs split into the haploid gametes during meiosis, each allele in a pair sorts independently from the other pairs. In linked genes, however, instead of sorting independently, sometimes a segment of a chromosome will stay together. And recombination sometimes occurs during meiosis when paired chromosomes exchange material called crossing over. And the result is a new mixture, a recombination. When one chromosome from the mother with over 8 million possibilities combines with one chromosome from the father with over 8 million possibilities, and this happens with all 23 chromosomes, that is 2 to the 23rd times 2 to the 23rd, or about 70 trillion possible zygotes. In other words, you are one in a 70 trillion chance of having your genetic makeup. But evolution is a process that involves change in populations, not individuals, over time. What is a population? It's a group of individuals that interbreeds. And we can genetically characterize populations by referring to the gene pool, the total genes of a population. One way to think about gene pool is to think of allele frequency or genetic variant frequency. The process of evolution is a genetic change in populations through time. And evolution is a change in allele frequency in a population over time. In theory, the gene pool or allele frequency of a population could remain stable over time, no evolution. This is expressed algebraically by the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium principle p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1. What this illustrates is simply one pair of uh, alleles from the mother shown against one pair of alleles from the father. And if both parents are heterogeneous, they each have a p and a q, and they mate, the probability that they would both have their p's put together into the zygote is p squared, or that their offspring would be um, heterogeneous like they are is 2pq, versus if both of the q's end up together. 
So what the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium principle states is that a population's allele frequency, that is their gene pool, will remain the same from one generation to the next if four conditions are met. Mating is entirely random. The population is large enough. No new variants are introduced into the gene pool and all individuals are equally successful at surviving and reproducing. If all four of these conditions are met, then the allele frequency in the population will not change through time and evolution will not occur. However, in life, these conditions are rarely met. So what are the sources of change in populations over time? The mechanisms of genetic evolution are mutation, natural selection, genetic drift, and gene flow. We've already learned about the first two of these, mutation and natural selection. These four mechanisms contribute to evolution, that is, they contribute to change in the allele frequency of a population over time. To review, what are mutations? They're simply random changes in the DNA molecules. They are frequent and most are thought to be neutral. But the only mutations that are passed on to the next generation are those that take place in the sex cells, that is, in either the egg or the sperm. Natural selection talks about how variation at the population level is already present. The environment exerts pressure that selects for some individuals and against others. So not all individuals are equally successful at surviving and reproducing, which goes against the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium principle. Now whether there's change or not in the allele frequency of the population due to natural selection depends on whether or not there's a change in the environmental forces through time. Directional selection refers to when natural selection does promote change in the allele frequency of the population. But you may also have stabilizing selection when natural selection promotes stability because there is no environmental change or you may have oscillating selection, that is, adaptive variation around a norm in response to environmental oscillations. Later on, we'll talk more about the rate of evolution or how we picture evolution took place or is taking place. The traditional view of the rate was gradualism in which changes gradually accumulate to the point that we call something a new species. And we have seen this in the fossil record. How can we tell? Well, you would expect to see intermediate fossil forms. But a second theory has been proposed, the theory of punctuated equilibrium, where you have long periods of stabilizing or oscillating selection punctuated by bursts of change. Following this model, you expect to see sudden new species in the fossil record, not gradual changes. We also see this type of, uh, or this rate of evolution. So these are not either or gradualism versus punctuated equilibrium, but they're both occur at different times during the evolution of humans, or either one. The third source of variation in populations is genetic drift, which is a change in allele frequency of a population by random fluctuations. Now, the smaller the population, uh, the more that genetic drift might occur. So it occurs especially with small populations that become isolated from the rest of the gene pool. So gene frequencies fluctuate from generation to generation, and the smaller the population, the wider these fluctuations are. When a few members of a population split off 
from an original larger group, what we call fissioning, you get what is called the founder effect, an immediate difference in the gene pool of the new small population. That new small group cannot contain all the genetic diversity, that is the entire gene pool of the original larger group. Therefore, they will immediately have a very different gene pool. Fission refers to when a population splits, and immediately the new subpopulations will differ in allele frequency from each other and the parent population. So particularly if a very small population fissions off, they will experience a founder effect, an immediate change in the allele frequency or the gene pool. Let's take an example. Let's say here is a large population and um, looking at simply uh, two alleles, half are blue, half are black. If this population were to split into two different sized groups, you can see that the smallest group immediately has a hugely different gene pool. Instead of 50-50, it's now 1783. But the other slightly larger new population also differs, 67-33. One example of this is the old order Amish. This population experienced a founder effect when a small religious group of about 200 people migrated from Europe to America. And the old order Amish do not allow outsiders to marry in. They also keep excellent genealogical records. Today, old order Amish populations in America have a high incidence of Ellis Van Creveld syndrome which is dwarfism with polydactyly, as you see here, strange fingernails, heart abnormalities, and other problems. Researchers charted the genealogies of all cases of this disease today, and they can all trace back to one couple of the original 200 founders, Samuel King and his wife. So evidently one of them, we don't know which, carried Ellis Van Creveld syndrome. The fourth source of variation in populations through time is gene flow. That is the introduction of new genetic material, new alleles into a population. And it occurs when two formerly separated populations begin to interbreed. So how does all of this relate to evolution? Well, natural selection takes place on the level of populations, not on individuals. What is a species? It's a population or group of populations that is capable of interbreeding and is reproductively isolated from other populations. Note that this definition is relative rather than absolute. A species will maintain gene flow within its gene pool. Now populations within species that are capable of interbreeding, but that do not do so regularly are called races. The gene flow is restricted. What are the isolating mechanisms that can lead to the separation of races or of species? Preventing gene flow. These include geographic isolation. Let's say that uh, a mountain range uh, arises and now the two populations are separated and cannot cross the mountain range to continue mating. This would also include ecological isolation. Perhaps they're in the same area, but they live in totally different ecozones. There's also a, a many different physical isolating mechanisms, including reproductive isolation, or even temporal isolation in the case of plants, or in the case of migrating animals. And of course, among humans and among some animals, social or cultural isolating mechanisms. So among humans, like the old order Amish, perhaps you don't allow 
anyone to marry outside of your own group. Or among some animals, you might have behavioral isolation. Now, different races do not inevitably evolve into new species, but note that a race to an anthropologist is a genetically isolated population that shares a unique gene pool or allele frequency. Later in the semester, we'll talk about human races. To summarize, evolution is a change in the allele frequency in a population over time. And natural selection is one of the important mechanisms of evolutionary change. Remember, in the theory of natural selection states that organisms are adapted to their environment, that a population undergoes adaptive change when the environment changes. Variation already exists, and so those best adapted to the new environment survive, and those who survive pass on their variation to their offspring. How does variation accumulate in newer generations of individuals? It's during sexual reproduction, through mutation, segregation, linked genes, and recombination. So these are the sources of variation introduced into individuals by sexual reproduction. But the allele frequency in a population can change over time due to mutation, natural selection, genetic drift, or gene flow. To review, change in the allele frequency of a population over time is called what? Evolution. What is the source of different alleles? Mutation. What do we call it when outsiders come into a population bringing new alleles with them? Gene flow. What is the result when a population splits and some move away or no longer breed with the rest? What happens to that smaller population that split off? that population experiences genetic drift. And the instantaneous change you get in the allele frequency of a small group that split off is called the founder effect. Does natural selection always change the allele frequency in a population, say from year to year? No. Natural selection works only when the environment changes and the selective pressures on a population change. Why may gene flow within a population become restricted? It could be due to cultural or social reasons or barriers, or physical barriers, or geographic barriers. A change in the allele frequency of a population over time is the definition for what? evolution.